guys, Mr. Macro here. This is part three of lesson 4.5, still doing sine and cosine graphs. One objective for this video, we are going to do some vertical translations for our sine and cosine graphs. So now we're focusing on this D value, which is either being added or subtracted to our sine or cosine, depending on what we're looking at. D is going to be a vertical shift. It's gonna move us up if that D value is positive, and we'll move down if that D value is negative. So we're still gonna do all that same stuff with A, B, and C, but now we're going to include this extra D value. So the first thing I'm looking at is this A value out in front. We've got a three in front of our cosine, so that tells me that the amplitude of our graph is going to be three. Now I'm actually gonna jump straight to this D value right away. It's a positive two, so that's gonna move us up to. So if we're looking at drawing in those horizontal lines like we usually do, to look at maximum and minimum values, normally we would go up to three because the amplitude is three, but we have to remember that this graph is also shifted up to units. So three would normally be the maximum, but we have to go up two more. So actually five is gonna be the maximum of this picture. Now normally we would go down to negative three because of the amplitude again, but we have to shift that up two spaces, so the minimum value is really gonna be at negative one once we account for that vertical shift. Next thing we're gonna look at is that B value to help us out with our period. Remember we go two pi over B, so in this case we're gonna go two pi over two, so we end up with a period of just pi. And then remember, we take that period that we have and split it into four equal parts, so we can look at where our X values are. Now there is not a C value on this one, meaning that there's not gonna be any left or right shift. So our graph is gonna start at zero. So I'm gonna plug zero in for my X value. Two times zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one. One times this three out in front is three. And then if we add two to that, we've got five. So at zero, we are up at five. And now I'm looking at this pi over four because that's how far apart our important points are. So if we take zero plus pi over four, we just get pi over four for that x value. And then we're gonna substitute that into our equation. Two times pi over four. Well, the two cancels with the four and we end up getting pi over two. Cosine of pi over two is zero. Zero times three is still zero. And if we add two to zero, we get two. So at pi over four, well, if this is pi, this would be pi over two, so halfway between zero and pi over two would be pi over four. We are up at two. Then we need to look at adding this pi over four again to get our next x value. So if we take pi over four, add it to pi over four, we get two pi over four, which reduces down to pi over two. So I'm gonna plug that in for x. Two times pi over two is just pi. Cosine of pi is negative one negative one times three is negative three, and add two, we get negative one. So at pi over two, we're down at negative one. Now we need to find our next x value. Remember this was two pi over four. If we add on another pi over four, that ends up being three pi over four. And now we have to plug that into our equation for x. So two times three pi over four ends up being three pi over two. Cosine of three pi over two is zero. Zero times three is zero and add two. Looks like we're back at two. So at three pi over four, which is about right here, we're back up at two. And then we need one more x value. So three pi over four plus another pi over four is four pi over four. Well, four pi over four is just the same as pi. Plug pi in for our x value. Two times pi is two pi. Cosine of two pi is one. One times three is three, and if we add two, we get five. So at pi, we are back up at five. So that's right here, and I'll connect all these dots with a curve. So there is one full cycle of our cosine graph. One more example for this video. Uh, here we've got two sine of pi x minus three. First thing I'm looking at is that a value. We've got two. So amplitude is two. If we're looking at that B value, here we've got pi. So we're gonna go two pi over pi to find the period. 
Well, those pi's cancel out, and we get a period of just two. We still need to split that into four equal parts, so I'm going to divide it by four, and we get one half as our spacing for our x values. This one, again, doesn't have a c value, so we're not moving left and right, but it does have a negative three on it, so we're gonna move down. So even though our amplitude is two, we need to shift that down three spaces when we draw in those horizontal lines. So normally we'd be up at two, but we have to go down three spaces. So our maximum is actually at negative one. Normally we'd stop at negative two, but again, we have to go down three spaces. So our minimum is gonna be down at negative five. So we're gonna be between these two red dotted lines. Since there's not a phase shift on this one, we're gonna start at zero for those x values. Pi times zero is zero, sine of zero is zero, two times zero is zero, and zero minus three, we get negative three. So at zero, we are down at negative three. Then we said our spacing was a half, so I'm gonna add half to zero. That's gonna be our next x value that we plug in. If we take pi times a half, well that's like pi over two, sine of pi over two is one, one times two is two, and if we subtract three, we get negative one. So at one half, I'm just gonna make this line right here one half, we're gonna be down at negative one. Then we're gonna add that half again. Half plus a half is one. Plug that in for x. Well, pi times one is pi. Sine of pi is zero. Two times zero is still zero. Subtract three, we get negative three. So this one right here is gonna be one, and we're down at negative three. Add half again, we end up getting, well, one plus a half would be one and a half, or three halves as a fraction. Plug that in for our x value. Pi times three halves is three pi over two. Sine of three pi over two is negative one. Two times negative one is negative two. And if we subtract three, we're down at negative five. So that'll be this point right here. And then our last x value, if we take three halves plus another half, that's four halves or two, plug two in for x, two times pi is two pi, sine of two pi is zero, zero times two, still zero, minus three, we get negative three. So right here at two, we are back at negative three, and then I'm gonna connect these dots with my sine curve. That's gonna be the last example for this video. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.